In this lesson, we'll double check the timing of the villain's actions to make sure things are happening at the right speed. And we'll also look for areas to add possible breakdown poses if needed to get better transitions from one extreme to the next. So a play blast may not be necessary. Let's go ahead and check our scene's frame rate. We are animating at 24 frames per second. So we should get close to that playing back the animation. But just to double check and make sure, let's head over to display, heads up display, and turn on the frame rate. All right, so when we hit play, again, we, we see that the animation is playing back and it's uh, true speed. So what we see before us is the actual speed of the animation, which is good. If you see a, a lower frame rate, chances are you'd want to just go ahead and play blast the animation. Okay, so taking a look at things, it seems like the spin is happening way too fast, and the problem is the audience will miss that action. So let's go ahead and space out our keys a bit more. So on frame 23, go ahead and take that key and drag all the way to the end of the animation on frame 40, just holding shift and dragging. We'll now go ahead and go to the center of our selection and just space the keyframe out so that the key now lies on frame 25. Let's go ahead and see how that looks when we hit play. All right, that might be a little bit too slow, so I'll simply go ahead and grab all of our keys again and shift the key that was once on 25 to now lie on frame 24. Okay, so let's go ahead and do another one frame spacing on the next spin, which is on frame 27. Again, we'll highlight that key and the rest of our keys that follow it and shift that down just one frame. Great. So we should get a, a better spin in the end. I'll just go ahead and hide our curves, hit play. Great. It's much better. All right, well, at this point, again, we'll want to look for any areas to add any breakdown poses. And I think there's just one area we can add a breakdown pose to. That's the transition from the character on her back to her last pose, 42. So just to interpolate better between these two poses, we can add a breakdown. So looking at this, let's go ahead and add that on frame. 38, the halfway point between these two poses. So going back to our control objects and taking a look at the action before and after, what we can do here is have the body kind of rotate a little bit more to our right. We can go ahead and grab all of our controls and translate them over in that same direction just a little bit more. Okay, great. And now, taking a look at the legs, go ahead and grab the, the right leg, and of course have that move over to the side a bit more. Grab the knee, bring that down, then fix the orientation of the ankle. It was bent too far back, so we'll just go ahead and bring that over. And we'll make sure that's on frame 38. Okay, so looking at the transition, staying with that leg from 34 all the way to 42, looks like the leg will also need to be brought back in the x-axis. All right, much better. Since we've brought it back, we'll also need to rotate the foot back a bit more here, too, to fix the, the angle of the foot. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and pull over the left leg. So, again, we'll translate that over and rotate the ankle over also. Great. That looks nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in the side view. 
Okay. If anything, I think we can go ahead and rotate the ankle down a bit more there on 30, 38. And also pull the leg back a bit more. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the arm control. So you can see how the sword is kind of up there on 34. Let's go ahead and rotate the sword down on 38. So the, the blade is resting against the floor. And we'll also want to bring the arm in some more here. Maybe pull it in just a little bit more, rotate the blade back on the y-axis. Make sure it's not intersecting through the surface. Great. I'd say we're just about done. How about the opposite arm? Let's go ahead and finish this up. So we can go ahead and bring this over. Maybe over a little bit more and closer to its uh, final resting pose. Great. And since we've made that adjustment, we'll also need to tweak the shoulder as well. Bring that over. I'll grab the elbow control, kind of bring that up. Over to fix the arms pose there. I think it's brought up a little bit too much, so I'll go ahead and just translate that down. And I think we can call that that pretty good. I think lastly, just to finish up, you can see how uh, much space we have between the back and the floor. So let's tweak this by grabbing all of our controls. We'll deselect our arm control, including the elbow control. And we'll just translate the character down on 38. Much better. So now she rolls against the floor, looking at her head. There's also too much spacing there, so we'll just need to rotate the neck down to fix that. There we have it. If you'd like, feel free to also go to the head control and rotate that down if you need to. Great. So... We've uh, adjusted the timing of the red character. We've also added a breakdown pose just to fix the transition at the end of the animation. So what that means is we're ready to start blocking in the blue character. She'll go by a little bit faster. Her poses aren't uh, as complex as the red character. So should be able to knock this out a little bit faster. And the exciting thing is once blocking is finished, smoothing out the animation will go by a lot faster because we have spent a lot of effort in the initial blocking pass. So that goes to show you how important, again, blocking is. So with that said, again, that finishes this lesson. In the next lesson, we will start to work on the heroine.